Now I want you to understand the organization of the spinal cord. Uh, here we have a cross section of the spinal cord. And there are three features in this cross section or axial section that I want you to understand. Uh, first is that the spinal cord is made up of centrally located gray matter that we see in through here. And then it communicates here to the opposite side that we see in through here. Uh, this has a butterfly appearance based on how it's organized within the spinal cord. In the central aspect here, uh, there is a central canal and cerebral spinal fluid uh, is found within the central canal. Lastly, uh, note that the peripheral aspect of the spinal cord in through here, here more laterally, here anteriorly, and over on the opposite side anteriorly and laterally as well, this represents peripherally located a white matter. Uh, ascending and descending tracks are traveling uh, in uh, these peripheral areas, uh, whereas uh, nerve cell bodies are housed in the gray matter. So white matter is peripheral, gray is internal in the spinal cord, and this is just the opposite of how it's organized in the brain, where the white matter is found peripherally, and then your white matter is found more deeply uh, within the brain. Now that you have a basic understanding of the arrangement of uh, gray matter to white matter in a cross-section through the spinal cord, it's important for you to realize that the ratio of gray to white matter will vary depending on which segment or cross-section of the spinal cord that you are uh, observing. So here in the series of axial or cross-sections, uh, you have a section through the uh, upper portion of the uh, spinal cord, the cervical area. Here's the uh, thoracic area. Here is the lumbar area. And then this lower uh, region represents the sacral uh, axial or cross section through the cord. Uh, first uh, concept here is that when you look at the uh, ratio of gray to white matter in the cervical area, as you see here, you have a lot of white matter here and little gray matter uh, in comparison. So if you divide the area represented by gray matter by the much larger area represented by the white matter, uh, this ratio uh, would be low. The concept for you to remember is that the ratio of gray matter to white matter increases inferiorly. So as you take a look here in the thoracic area, uh, you start to see a greater ratio of gray to white. And as you go over here to the lumbar area, a greater ratio of gray matter to white matter. And then when you get to the sacral area, uh, you see a large area of gray matter, and you see, in comparison, uh, very little uh, white matter. So here in the sacral area, the ratio of gray matter to white matter uh, is very, very uh, high. Uh, the rationale for this is that by the time you get to the cervical area, uh, descending and ascending tracts that are coming from the much lower uh, levels of the spinal cord are being joined in by ascending and descending pathways that are responsible for conveying information uh, from the more upper uh, aspects of the body. So you have a lot more ascending and descending traffic in the more superior uh, axial sections of the cord. And so the white matter then will start to overwhelm uh, the amount of gray matter that you have uh, up in the upper levels of the, the spinal cord itself. Now I want you to understand some of the details uh, that relate uh, specifically to gray matter. Uh, the first concept here with respect to the gray matter is 
that it's organized into uh, horns. And here we're looking at the dorsal horn. Uh, the dorsal horn receives sensory input and also receives uh, input that are involved in the coordination of reflexes. The larger area located uh, ventrally uh, is the ventral horn. Uh, this is a more expanded area of the gray matter. The ventral horn is housing alpha and gamma motor neurons. And so what this means is we have a functional division of labor between the horns. The dorsal horns are responsible for processing and relaying sensory information, whereas the ventral uh, horns are going to be responsible for motor output. In uh, thoracic segments T1, through T12 and L1, L2, and perhaps L3, there is an intermediate uh, horn or gray horn, and we see that in this thoracic uh, spinal cord uh, section, axial section. The intermediate uh, horns uh, contain motor neurons that are part of visceral motor output, sympathetics. Um, are being relayed out of the cord uh, from motor neurons then that are sympathetic in nature, effort in nature that reside here. <music>